Hi guys, it's Wayne McMaster here, another quick video for you today. I'm going to be showing you a quick little video how you can create a fixed sidebar widget for your WordPress website for people visiting on desktop. Now, if you're wondering what I mean, I'm actually just going to tab over. This is a website I've created for a friend of mine who teaches guitar online, and he has these offers on his sidebar here for his blog posts, such as a free beginner course uh, with some basics on how to learn a guitar, a shop, a few other bits and pieces. Now, you notice as I scroll down and reading this blog post, it actually follows down the page. So as he goes, as you go through and read, you're constantly being shown these offers. Whereas if you switch back to my website, which I'll just quickly go back, close this one down. If I go down to my latest blog post, if I scroll down here, I've got this offer on the right, but it simply disappears straight away, which means as they keep reading this post, the offer is not being shown and they're probably just being forgotten about. So with this quick and easy plugin, I'll show you how you can set up a nice fixed widget that follows your uh, reader down the page on desktop. So I'm gonna go over to my dashboard here. Now, this is where you land when you first log into your website. I'm gonna go down the left here to plugins and click add new. It's very simple to begin with, but there are a few tweaks we wanna do just to make sure things are working properly. But basically we're searching for Q2 W3 fixed widget. So Q2 W3, a bit hard to remember, but anyway, Q2 W3 fixed widget for WordPress. So I'm going to install that. And they're going to activate it. And this is how simple it is to get going in the beginning. If I go to appearance and widgets, I simply click on the widget that I want. Usually you want it to be the bottom widget. You don't want it to be at the top. I click fixed widget, save. So this plugin installs the option, this little option here, the fixed widget option. So now if I tab back and refresh this page, the page reloads and we have this nice fixed widget which follows us down the page, which is pretty nifty. But there is something else we need to look at. Now, if I keep scrolling down and keep going right to the very bottom, you'll notice it passes into my footer because it is simply scrolling through everything on the website. And we actually want it to stop at a certain point and stop following down the page. So there's a few ways that we can do this. So let's say I'm looking at this and this is say 500 pixels tall. I'm gonna switch back over to my dashboard now, if I go under appearance, there's fixed widget options. So I'm going to click on that. And there's a few ways we can stop this from happening. So one thing I can do, see we've got this margin top and margin bottom. So what I can actually do is make sure it doesn't go any higher than a certain height beyond its sort of position or any lower on the page. So I've added 500 pixels here to the bottom margin. And save changes. I now tab over, refresh. You see it's now landed up a little bit. But the problem with this is if we get this height correct, let's say I make it 600 and it ends up being correct here, there is the issue that maybe this height will change on another computer and it might not work exactly how we want it to. So what we can do is add a stop ID. So if I just quickly tab back, you see here there's a stop ID we can pop in here, which is actually uh, a CSS or like a HTML ID tag that we want to pop there onto this to enable it to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tab back for a second. And so this is starting to get a little bit more advanced, but it's still not too difficult. If you're in um, Chrome, I believe it's inspect, uh, inspect element. Uh, basically, we want to right click on our footer area here or the row where we want this to stop. I'm going to click inspect element. You see here we have this div ID. Let's see if I can zoom in a bit. No. You see here we've got this, here it says div ID footer dash widgets. If I double click on that, and this is using Firefox. If you don't have Firefox, you can do, it's very similar in Chrome. It's not, not, not too different. Right click, we go to copy. Because we know the ID of this div here, which you see if I hover over it, it highlights it. Now, one thing I've just realized too is I maybe don't want it to cross over into this full row, not just this area here, which it highlights. So if I just scroll up a bit, you'll see it selects that whole footer. 
So the footer ID is main dash footer. So if I double click on that and copy, I can now close this down, tab back. I'm just going to paste that main dash footer into there and save those changes. Now I tab across, refresh. So now this time when I scroll down, it stops just above it there. So for whatever reason, there is a big gap here, but it might also be our margin. So you can see here, we can actually create a bigger gap. So if I actually go back, we still got a 500 pixel margin. So we've got our footer plus a 500 pixel margin, which I actually did not intend while I was doing this video, but we can simply make that 10, save it, refresh. You see, it has now hit the bottom again. So now we have this nice fixed widget. When I get to a set, when I get to this footer, main footer, it stops. So the stop ID is where we don't want this element to cross over that that sort of what's called a div, but basically this section of the website. So that's how you can simply find that stop ID by right clicking, inspecting the element, hovering over these areas here to find and highlight the area you want it to stop above. So now you can see that footer is highlighted. We can take that ID between the quotation marks and pop that in the site ID. So that is basically how you can do it. Now there are a few other options here. Um, so I generally don't ever, ever really need to play with these, um, but you do have the option to disable say width. So if you're going to disable this on say uh, like a tablet or a phone, so maybe you might make it 500. Something you can test. Um, it depends on say some of the breakpoints in your th in your theme. So if I have a if I'm able to resize this browser and show make it narrower, maybe there's a point where the actual tab, the actual sidebar moves underneath the content. So if I just quickly tab back, so. Now that I'm, I'm back on here, if I right click and inspect the element again, I actually have this little option top right in Firefox. There is something similar in Chrome. I couldn't tell you where it is exactly now. But if I click on this here, close this down, I get this responsive view. You see here on this particular website that my sidebar has moved in underneath. But because there's nothing else underneath the content and area, it doesn't really affect it. But if I want to, I can find out the width. I can simply see up here, I've got my width at the top. I can try resizing it until it lands. So at the moment, we have a sidebar here at 1023. Now this is the Divi theme, so around 980 is when it changes. So you can see here, things have changed at about 978. 982, so around that 984, 982, so if I said 984, I'd turn that off. So 984 pixels wide, I could go in here and say, okay, at 984 pixels, anything less than that, I can turn this off. But it's not really something you need to worry about. It is something if your design is a little more complex, you do have that option. Um, you can also disable it if the height is not tall enough. So let's say I make the height of this browser too short. Let's say make it wide, I'm scrolling, but people can't access my button for whatever reason. So at the moment, it needs to be at least 685 pixels high. So if I actually come up a bit to here, I'm going to come across and say, so 685 pixels, disable on this height, save those changes. I come back, I refresh this page. Now, if I go press home to go to the top, you can see here, as I scroll, I get to the button, but it's no longer an issue. So that's a way to protect your, so if your element on the right here is too tall, you can turn that off by disabling the height, finding out, especially if you specify a height for it, you can then go in and make sure that the browser is going to be at least that height to accept um, the auto scroll and make it effective. So I hope you found that video useful. Like I said, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, if I just close this down, all you need to do is uh, basically go into your plugins and install that um, 
that uh, Q2W3 widget. Keep forgetting the name because the uh, <laughs> it's not exactly an easy name to remember. But Q2W3 fixed widget. When you go into your widget area here, you'll see we get this option, fixed widget, you turn it on or off, nice and simple. I'm not going to turn that off and uh, leave it off because I do... I don't plan on having that on this website right now. It's something I'm working on for a different widget soon. But that's basically how you do it. Turn it on and off, nice and easy, and then play with your options here under fixed widget options, under appearance, if you want to fix a few little bugs. So yeah, I hope you found that video useful. If you want more videos like that on how to just do little customizations to your WordPress website, please give this video a like, consider subscribing. Uh, also coming out with uh, a lot more tutorials, especially on social media, how to do some things in Photoshop for your website and for social media, as well as just some tips and advice to grow your presence online. So um, yeah, give that hit that like button, subscribe, and we'll hope to see you again soon.